Yeah, I hear you. It's, it's a little echoey, but it, it's fine. It'll be fine. Everybody, we are live again. Danny Samir, search for Huru. Yeah, I hear you. We are live again. Sorry about that. We are live again. Danny Samir, search for Huru. And on uh, tonight's show, we have the sister Fafu Milao uh, with us. And tonight's topic is, has women submitting to men become tattoo ta become taboo in america fafu, fafu milau this has been uh we we've actually talked about this before not me and you but we somewhat have had this discussion on the show before i think so i think it has i think a lot of it has to do with feminism uh this the this idea of woman empowerment i mean what do you what do you think from do you would, would you submit to your man and at first from a woman's perspective what is submission number one on the list is well, teach everyone following me um trust the mission is trust respect and then of course love you could love um your partner with your whole heart but if you don't respect him and trust him it's impossible to submit um so and, and it, it requires a man a real like you know a, a man who's playing his part as a man i think for a woman to submit to him and that's what uh, it was a major contributing factor to the dwindling of the submissive woman, along with what you said. So submission, you ask what is submission? Right. Trusting your man or your husband enough to have your best interest at heart, not put himself before you, but, you know, function and, and you know, holistically on behalf of both of you. Um, trusting him to do that, trusting him to, of course, it's never about abuse. It's never abusive. Um, but it's really just allowing him to take the lead as a man, you know? And it doesn't mean that you don't have a voice. You know, um, but for me, it really just comes down to to being able to be in a situation where you trust your man enough to guide you and your family. So, um, what, go ahead, go ahead. I don't want to jump ahead of the questions, but I think that no, 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 go ahead. To, to relationship soon, and that's what messes everything up. Um, you know, it really takes getting to know each other to find out, you know, you don't just jump in, you don't just meet someone and, oh, I'm attracted to you, oh, we're going to date, and then you just submit to him, you know, because what are you submitting to? You don't know what this person is about, right? Um, yeah. well, well, now, what should a man be bringing to the table to make him worth submitting to, like? <laughs> Security. Um, okay. Okay. Let, let's start off with security. Now, I was out with a friend, a lady friend, uh, a couple of weeks ago, and she was saying, like, the whole conversation in regards to what should be paid in the household, like, what should a man cover as far as bills and responsibilities, and what should a woman cover? I said, the man should cover the mortgage, the woman, the utilities. She said no. She said she wants to split everything 50-50 because uh, she wants to seat at the table in regards to decision making. So she feels as if if she's not splitting everything 50-50 straight down the middle, she can't have any say on uh, what goes on in the household. I mean, what are your thoughts on this whole, you know, uh, when you say security, you know, splitting everything 50 50, or I mean, how should it look? I think the West has done a wonderful job helping up egoism in women. 
uh, too much testosterone to the contraceptives and all of those things because that sounds very <laughs> controversial. Controversial. There's a there's a major based on what you said that she in particular said, and I don't know her, so I'm not. There's no personal, you know, and that are out. Because that's somebody calling me or calling you. Who's this calling me? I'll go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. They're calling me. Go ahead. To say Go that ahead. you want to have go 50 50 with the reason so that you can have a seat at the table and have a say is. You there? Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> it, 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 it's, um, it sounds like ego and it sounds like the person or a person that is challenged. When it comes to um, authority or male authority, somebody has to be the authority. So even if things are going 50 50, the reason shouldn't be because you want to have a voice. You should have a voice regardless, even in submission. Okay. Um, so, so, as far as you know, you said security. That, that's point number one, I guess. Like bills. From, right. from my understanding, the majority of relationships in in marriage is in because of finances. From what I understand, I could be wrong. So, as far as bills, like I mean, as far as just the you know bills, mortgage, car notes, how should that be split up? Like, how does that? How does how should that work in a normal household? Um, to be realistic, I think that each individual's income you know is, is at the center of that you can't just decide that you're going to go 50 50 or split those according and without discussing finances you know what i mean um so i think in each family contract or each each family contract or each relationship it will definitely vary um i speak like and you know because we're 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 in the West, the way things are set up in most households or most relationships, if you don't make contributions, if both partners are not making contributions, then the the probability of the relationship failing is higher because of stress. Mm -hmm. Because one or both of the individuals probably start to feel neglected, you know, or like they're over compromising. So I really feel like it depends on it depends on on each individual's, you know, what, what I mean if, if if your husband is working on Wall Street or say if the wife is working on Wall Street, but the husband is a plumber. Odd odd match, but you know love is love, right? Listen, plumbers make plumbers make good money. Right, but I'm saying uh, on contract, you know, like it, you know, maybe he's not getting work, something happens, or you know, things slow down. Right. She's a Wall Street banker, you know, so, um, but he's the man, you know. Should he be expected to pay all the bills? No, not you know. I I don't I I don't think so. Unless you know. Again, I think I really really think that it depends on on the person as far as splitting bills. I personally don't have a problem with it, and my reason doesn't have anything to do with feeling like I have a voice or I want to be able to make decisions. It's because we're a team and we're trying to build together. And I'm, you know, I like my mindset is let's build an empire. So, right. what can we do together to make this happen? You know, if you're taking out of the pot, you got to be putting something back in the pot, you know. So, me personally, I feel like if both parties are able to make um, financial contributions, then it should be so. And each individual's income and what their financial responsibilities are within the relationship should be taken into consideration because it's not going to be the same, you know, for every couple. Okay. Uh, somebody said the term submission is wrong and archaic. The word should be complete cooperation in a relationship that should be bi-directional. 
Do you have an issue with the term submission? I know sometimes some people feel submission, that term is problematic. Well, the definition that they just, what, what that person just said is the definition of submission of sub, or subservient. Okay. You know, um, it's, this is what we were saying the last time that I was on with you, is that the word has taken on negative connotation here in the West. Yeah, what is what is what is bi-directional? What is what is that? Go both ways, I guess. Go both ways. Not not go both ways in that way, but you know what I mean. Like, okay, when you say bi-directional, what do you mean? Well, I don't know what that person is is saying. Okay, cause K A S bi-directional. Okay, yeah, I get it. <laughs> I see where that's funny. To, to, um. First of all, submission does not mean that everything goes one way. It's mm -hmm. not all the man's decision making this and the other. Again, this is where the trust comes in and each person knowing each other, knowing what's important to you know um, each other. So, um, not only is the woman being submiss submitted or serving or tending to or allowing the man to make decisions, but he is also catering to her needs too. You can't have it one way. So if I'm going to say, okay, honey, you know, you make the plans for this week or whatever we're doing for this weekend, you know, you're, you're good at that. Go ahead and do that. Then it's up to you to not, you know, okay, there goes that word. Hopefully you're not a misogynist. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So a woman should never be submissive to a man that is a misogynist, right? However. Okay, when you say misogynist, like explain, explain what you mean. Cause I'm seeing that word thrown around so much by these feminists. Like anything that a man does is misogynistic. Like, what do you mean? I just see that word being used way too much. Yeah, it, it's happening a lot here. Again, here, um, let's take it back to where you said the feminist. It's the feminist that goes again, way back to Way, way, way back. Um, it's the food. Um, it's women being allowed. I'm going to tell you what I, what misogyny is in a, in a moment, but where it came from is uh, to me also a part of the system, the judicial system, the, the, the law here. It allows men more often or not to not get away with traumatizing or physically abusing or mentally abusing women, but women very often get away with doing that to men, you know, um, traumatizing the men, beating him, um, even sexually assault. And, you know, it, it doesn't get looked at the same way. So oftentimes, or, or a mother will be extremely abusive to her son. Um, so basically the root of misogyny from a psychological uh, perspective is usually brought on like um, from trauma or abuse from deep deep resentment so it's those who see the hatred or prejudice against women most often the man doesn't even realize that he has that about him most misogynists don't even realize that they are so just because they hate women or are prejudiced towards them or have a deep disdain for them does not necessarily mean they're gay because it doesn't mean that they have an attraction for men on the other hand, they may still sexually be attracted to women, but they just can't stand them. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, that comes from repetitive trauma or like, a, you know, like hurt. And so, uh, you know, basically, people want to know, I'm sure, what, what a, what a, um, a misogynist man is like. Okay, usually he will do Things that he knows that the woman doesn't like. Okay, so like, um, if they go out to dinner, he, he knows that you know she likes a particular thing on a certain way. He'll deliberately order it another way and just tell her she doesn't need it. You know. Uh, shout out to uh, my my Ebo brother Ebo Quainu. Uh, Monday. Monday says that girl, women are afraid of men with big vision. Is that is that true with a big vision? Is that true? 
women are afraid of men with big vision. Yeah. That's a turnaround. Okay. Um, I am definitely attracted to men. I can't speak for those women. I am attracted to a man with a big vision because, you know, when you say big vision, you know, that means he's thinking about future. He's thinking about security in the family. He's thinking about, you know, I, I don't want a man that doesn't have a big vision. I need to know you got something going on and you have a plan. I am c accustomed to hearing that men are intimidated by women with big vision or who mm. come off powerful, you know. Um, I don't know. Any women in the chat want to speak up on that? <laughs> um, I don't think that they're afraid of men with big vision more so. A, a, a very confident man can come off as controlling when he's really not. He's just he just going to be from. He's just playing his role as a confident man. He's secure in himself, you know, and you know, we tend to think that only women have insight to what we, you know, see into things. Sometimes our emotions get in the way and we do need that man to, to come with some rationale when we're in an irrational state. You know, we do need the logic sometimes to override our intuition, you know, or, or not, not, not override, I shouldn't say that. But oftentimes when pressure is at hand, women start to think or express themselves or make decisions from an emotional place. So, me personally, I need a man with a big vision. Oh, who's okay. seeing who can come and steer me. Hey, hey, honey, you're going off track right here. Listen, send for yourself. <laughs> Look at me. You know, do you love me? Yes, honey, I love you. <laughs> do you trust me? Yes, honey, I trust you. Have I ever lead, led you astray? No, you have. Okay, I got this. You know, and that can only come if that man knows me. You know, you, you laughing. What's going on in the chat? Nah, uh, Susan's uh, tribe. <laughs> Shout out to Susan. She says, uh, if Mr. Big Vision has a job, then let's talk. But he can't sit home all day being a visionary. Now, <laughs> now I, I, don't know if you, I don't know if you hear, but you uh, heard of the, you know, the aspiring rapper who's in his mid-30s. Who doesn't have a job, but you know, just you know, someone's gonna hear his uh demo one day. One day, someone's gonna hear his demo. Like one day, Jay Z is gonna pick up his demo one day. And then you know, I play football in college, so of course you got the aspiring football player that wants to go to the pros, but like he's 30, 31, you know, no drop, no job, but you know, he swears that the uh, uh, Oakland Raiders are gonna gonna pick up the phone and call him just one day, one day, or uh, one day he's gonna get that trial with Chicago Bulls, the the basketball player who's 30, 31 that picks up bas that plays pick up basketball at LA Fitness. Like one day, one you day, know, uh, one day, yeah. The coach of the, the, the Chicago Bulls, the head coach of the Bulls, is gonna walk into the LA Fitness and see him dunking, and he's gonna get his contract. Yeah. So what about, should you still support your man, even though he has, he has a big vision, but he doesn't have a job. In fact, there you go. Should you support a man with big vision, but no job? That's, that's the, that's where submission is a no, no. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? Like, what are, you know, it's like, if you're not in a position to, you you can't lead your own life. You cannot responsibly, you know, make decisions, make common sense decisions in your own life. You're not being mature. You're not securing yourself. You're not bringing anything in for yourself. You're not feeding yourself. You're not doing anything but one daying and dreaming. Then I can't submit to you. I, you know, it's just like, and, 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 and that does not constitute a man. That does, that means you, you, you're, you're a male, you're, you're a, a man child at that point. This is my opinion. If you just didn't, if you just one day one, because there's no excuse for you to not be doing something else in the time being. Why are you waiting for your dream to manifest? You know what I'm saying? You should be doing something else. 
you know, you, you, you cannot be a man in a relationship and not be bringing something besides vision to the table. You know, that's what we're for. See, someone said in the, in the comment section, stop listening to, uh, was it Ben? He said, uh, stop listening to white woman logic. If not, you'll end up old and alone. Don't be the cat lady. I, I agree with that. And also gender war games plus our economic struggles, more broken families. Exactly. So that's what's going on. This is why we have the, it becomes so taboo to be submissive here now in the West. It's because the whole gender thing is all screwed up. They're teaching us that there should be no gender roles. You know, we should be able to do everything. That, you know, we can, you know, we can do everything, but it doesn't mean we're supposed to go out and do everything that the man can do. We can, we should, you know, we can, we're equipped to do it because, you know, we're strong like that. We're tough, we're survivors. If, if something happens to our man that we need to be able to, to step up and, and, you know, pay the bills or, you know, go to work if you're not working or do whatever, you know. Um, I believe, I believe in, in gender rules. I don't believe in being, you know, like, I don't believe in, in, in being confined to those rules. I do, believe, you know, we, we were doing the whole Mother's Day, Mother, a lot of people miss her interpreted or heard what I said the way that they wanted to as opposed to really getting the fact that you know I was actually on my brother's side. Um I feel like you know we no I know we were born as women you know free wired to behave and to live a certain way and to carry ourselves a certain way and to interact with men a certain way. Vice versa men were born to do that too. It throws everything off. It, it, it's a recipe for a, a broken relationship or a broken family when, you know, we start straying away from what is naturally innate in us. Um, I think it, 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 the society is just too toxic. And that's why I'm in favor of going back to the continent where, you know, it might seem Stone Age or Flintstone like to some people, but if you look at how things are going, it works. You know what I'm saying? It works. There are longer relationships. You know, there you know those who have businesses together. They're more successful. You know, um, it. It. My advice to women would be get back to learning how to be subservient submission. Not with the the, you know, again the English language is all twisted, but not with all the negative um kind of issues. It's important that we understand what it really means to submit and what the foundation of that is. You know, um Uh, Monday also says a non-resourceful man should shouldn't be giving a chance to even date. What are your thoughts on that comment? A non-resourceful man, right? Is that is is he that by nature, or is he just in a in a bind? You know. Mm. That's a good. I, that's, a, that's a good question. That's a good question. But okay, so let me ask you this, Father Fabio. As a woman, how do you identify if a Negro is in a bind or if he's just damn lazy? Like, how do you identify that? Well, this is why it's important to not rush into things because I had a situation like that. <laughs> yeah. are you real, are you real, you're real low. I can barely hear you. You know, I can't hear. You can't hear me? Okay, that's better now. There you go. There you go. Okay, go ahead. Okay. I was saying that I was in a situation like that. It was funny to me. Um, we got to slow down, first of all. Pay attention and stop thinking with your thought. Excuse me. Stop thinking with what's between your legs. You can think clearly of it. You know, 
um, the judgment is more clouded if as soon as you jump into bed with that guy. You know, um, the signs are always going to be there. Lack of consistency with anything that he tells you is a big sign that he is he's, uh, not just in a bind, but that's just the kind of man that he is. Um, empty promises, you know, stories not adding up. You have to know. You have to know. This happens to me. It, you have to know. You, it, there's just no way to not you know if you know, do your homework, wait, be patient, put him to the test. Men put women to the test all the time, they test us. I don't care what anybody says. How, how do you think we test you guys? Pardon me, how do you, um, how do you, how do you think men test women? Like, how, what type of way? <laughs> Hold on, let me put some more thought around it because that's that's. Uh-huh. But but women, we need to test men before we commit to them. You know, um, you know, try him out. If he says, if he's, oh, I'm in a bind, but you know, I'm looking for a job or whatever. Oh, okay, all right. So, what is you know, you're, you looking for a job entail? You know. Oh, you know, I'm up every day at eight o'clock leaving the house, you know, so and so and so. You know, start texting him in the morning. All right, hey, how you doing? You know, so and so and so. I thought I'd give you a nice wake up call, you know, wish you luck, you know, throw some nice energy, some positive energy away, keep your job hunting or whatever. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You know, um, you know, somebody like me, I'm going to ask, you know, like, um, what are the best hours to call you? Before I even do that, I'm going to say, what are the best hours to call you? Can I call you anytime? You know, when can I? And if you tell me, oh, yeah, you can call me anytime. And if you if I meet you and, and you tell me you're not working or you don't have any source of income or anything, but you're working on it, this is, like, this is what you have backing you, but you're just in a tough spot right now, I'm going to be the one to call you random hours of the day. Not every day, all day, but I'm going to call you <laughs> to see how your job search is going, you know? Um, but uh, a man that is is not jumping and buying, he's just not doing anything, he don't want to do nothing, he'll also take a lot from you too. This is what you know, I think is that you know, he'll always have his hand out, you know. So, um, all right, so I know we talked about security. Uh, what, what, what else is there? Um, for submission. Correct. So we talked about security. Uh, what else? What else are you looking for? Honesty. So that's where the you know honesty. You got to be able to, or you know, consistency. But honesty. I, mean, I guess no person is a hundred percent honest, but at least try to be. Um, honesty is a big, big, and and keeping your word. So. If you say you're going to, you got to show a woman that from early on. If you say that you're going to do something, whether it be for her or for yourself, you show it. You know, um, again, you know, I, all of these things are going to fall into security because security is, you know, consists of a lot. So um, honesty makes you feel secure enough to, you know, submit. Um, and then, of course, this should have been at the very top of the list, but show a woman that you know how to treat her. Okay. You know, not just respect, you know, but treat her like a lady. You know, if but you. I'm you pretty were, sure. Do you think sex is important? Oh, God, I was trying to get to that. Yeah, that was, okay, go, go, okay, finish it and we'll get to that. About to get wrong. Okay. <laughs> so it, it's not just about respecting her, but treating her like a lady um, or treating her the way that she's expressed to you that she wants to be treated. Um, it's very, very, very important. You know, it's good for her self esteem. And of course, it goes back to security and her trust in you. 
Um, so, go ahead. Right. Now you were going in and out, like. <laughs> Pardon. You 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 were going in and out. So I guess did you say something at the end or? I said so. Sex. You asked about sex. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um. Yeah. That kind of ties into on a serious note. It kind of ties into showing the woman that at all times you have her best interest at heart, just as much as you have yours, if not more, in that category. Um, she should be doing the same for you as well. So you know the whole all the typical cliche talk about pleasing her first, making sure that you know she gives hers first, and all of that. I mean, if that's what you, you know, why not? Um, but it doesn't, it, it, it doesn't stop there and it doesn't even have to be centered around that as far as, you know, pleasing her and it's, it's also just doing the things that she likes, but also taking time out to explore and figure those things out without even having to tell you. It shows her that you're actually interested in being here enough to figure it out or to, to learn her, not just there, but all together, you know? Um, and then I feel like conversation about sex is, is completely normal and should happen to, you know, talking about it, you know, it opens up the door, um, it makes things flow and you've got to be able to put it down. You have to be able to, to, to rock her world. You have to, you know, you, you don't want any void, you know, and that's what a good relationship is about, you know, and realize that they're there's a, there's a void here or, or some things being neglected here that you talk about this and you're working it and fill this with but the worst void or one of the worst voids you can have in a relationship is sexual fulfillment and if you cannot please her in that sense she's probably going to walk around with a chip on her shoulder and you won't be getting much submission so I mean <laughs> like, sex is just as important as, as the respect and you know um again though it it goes both ways so um I think a man will want to do more for you if you show him that you want to please him too. So with everything. Uh, um Ben Jos Joseph says black women stop listening. I think you already read this. Thank you for the super chat, Ben Joseph. Let me get to these super chats real quick. Uh thank you guys for for contributing to the uh the the church fund thank you thank you so much who else who else we have in here uh okay somebody super chatted but retracted their uh, message so that's okay someone said that sex is important because it's how we bond energy and that's absolutely true um but not necessarily if you, if my mind is a little bit different you know um are we talking about sexual intercourse or tantric, you know. Um, and tantric can include sexual intercourse or just feeling and such to connect them and sharing that energy. So, um, yeah, if, if there's good chemistry or this is how you, you know, you'll know if there's good chemistry, um, connecting through sex and sex is or can be a very strong trust builder. Um, there's a lot of, you know, um, telepathic and uh, you know emotional energy and communication that goes on. You know, if you're really connected or want to connect to your 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 partner, and you you you're really focused on you, you don't even have to be trained and, and practice all of this stuff during sex. You know, each person should be making that effort to really connect and there's a whole lot of communication that goes on between right here it's you know you feel it all down in there but it comes all the way up into here and up into here you know completely right that's a whole nother topic but sex is definitely um a good key but i don't want i didn't want to stress too much or bring sex up to because that also causes confusion it it, it can you know blind people 
Um, some people start to prioritize spec or center everything around spec. Um, you know, or when you're in an unhealthy relationship because the sex feels so good and there's such a good sexual connection, you stay in that relationship. And so then we have something else going on there. But, um, yeah. All right, let me read this. This is this is now, I've heard this a number of times. Uh, King of Abyssinia says, they let a bunch of chumps run through them and wonder why they are single. I say leave women like that single so the next generation of women learn their lesson and act proper. Uh, what, are, what are your thoughts on that comment? Um, and, and pretty much the comment is, you know, a lot of times women, uh, you know, will, will easily give it up to Pookie and Ray Ray, you know. That's what I was saying about um, not jumping into things so fast. Um, I'm going to take it a little bit personal for a second. Uh, just some things because um, when I was on with you with the whole, you know, women playing fathers, I said something. I shared one fraction of my story, and a certain, you know, quite a few people heard what they wanted to hear and assumed that, you know, you know, some other things about me. Which I was just like, huh? How did you get that? Um, I'm a firm believer in taking time. Like, like you, you have to take time to clean relationships. Um, you have to take time between jumping into relationships. Mm -hmm. Before you open your eyes, like, you know, we've been taught, <laughs> we've been taught, <laughs> sorry, get up. We've been taught, oh, you know, you need to just go, get some dick and get over him. Then mm -hmm. I guess it's a little bit different from them. They've been taught that and, and I don't think it's healthy for anybody to do that because you're picking up energy and stuff. Um, but every time you have sex, you're picking up all of that energy and but you're not allowing yourself to feel from the past these things. You're not allowing yourself to grasp whatever they were, the, the lesson was that needed to be learned from your last relationship. Um, I don't want to state that it's because women allow men to run through them like trains. That's why they're single. Well, if we talk about the anatomy, that's, you know, women could, could go on and on and on and on and, and still be tighter than, you know, a woman that's had sex like only five times in her life. So we'll deal with the anatomy aspect if that's what you were talking about, brother. But energetically speaking and mentally speaking, yeah, it's not a good look. Um, we have to take time out to learn ourselves, to um, better ourselves. Womanhood is, it's not something that you just turn, go into because you turned a certain age. It's all about your experiences, how you carry yourself, how you project yourself. The energy that you present when you walk into a space will tell people in that area if you're a woman or if you're just a girl or a young lady or, or whatever. Um, it, that's another thing, you know, it's, it, <laughs> Again, here in the West, making it seem like promiscuity is is okay. It also allows the woman to run with, I'm the boss, I'm, I control me. Yeah, you control, you should control yourself a little bit better. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you could you, you boss of you, but the boss of you didn't act like it. You know what I'm saying? Um, but when it comes to relationships, you know, it's no longer just about you. It, there's a there's a balance. You you know you remain an individual, but you're also sharing yourself with another person. Your lives are merging. So where is the equilibrium there? Where are we meeting with that? Um, there's a lot of you know illnesses and and stuff in Western society, and we could go on and on and on and on and on and on and on. Um, Men have a responsibility to play too. You you can't just blame it on the women allowing men to 
run through her like that? At what point do you take responsibility and say, you know what? You're one of my black empresses. Hey, queen, you, you, you're one of my black queens. I want to say, uh, go, ahead, go ahead and keep talking. I just got to grab my charger from my laptop before it goes dead. No, go ahead. Um, yeah. You know, we also have to start viewing women as something, you know, to be as, as you know, as an individual, as, as something to be prized and cherished too. You know, teach us something. Teach us something. When you, you know, when you see a woman is, you know, out there trying to give it up to you all easy and everything like that, take that opportunity to counsel her in a way, you know, that she might receive it. Let her know what a real man is looking for in his sister. If you ever really want to be <laughs> with a real man, you know, this is this is what we're really looking for. You got it all wrong. You know what I'm saying? If you continue to carry yourself this way, you're never going to be happy. You're not going to be with a man that's going to respect you. You might be with a man, but will he ever respect you? You know? You know fuck, can, I, can I interject for Malone? Yeah. Like, I've tried that before. And there's a saying that nice guys finish last. That's I that, never, that, 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 that never works. So, you know, I, I mean, I've done what you said, I've done before. And she ends up getting smashed by Pookie and Ray Ray around the corner. I, 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 I hear you. I, I hear you, but I just, it's just, I, I, I've i never seen a, a, an example where that, what you just said, works out. Well, people in the chat, you know what I mean? It, it'll work. Here's what it is. Here's what it is, right? We got to learn where to put our energy and where to put our, our voice. If the person is not willing to receive it, you know, you got to know. They, they want to. And, it, you know, if a woman or a man is just on a mission to just, you know, get laid all the time or do whatever, then that's just that. You know, if she wants a relationship, if she comes to you and she wants you, she's shown you and she really, really wants to be you, but she has some ways about her. Maybe she'll listen, maybe she won't. I don't know. But I still think that men have a responsibility to try to keep it in their pants too, instead of taking advantage. Because a lot of these women, these, these women are actually young girls in grown women's bodies, you know, running around, bruised up emotionally and mentally. You know, products of repetitive sexual molestation, you know, um, having a virginity broken at, you know, unthinkable ages, having, you know, given their heart and trust to guys, you know, too early or the wrong one and having them, you know, so they're walking around feeling hopeless, you know, and they don't even realize it. But let me ask you, uh, but a lot of times, do you think these women are sincere and want, I guess, healing? You know, are, are really wanting to change? Um, no, not all the time. Yeah. They, they have to gauge that because, you know, women have a good talk too, just like men have, have a good talk. Um, No, some some this is where counseling comes in and it again it doesn't have to be in a clinical setting. Um and this is again why we have to get back to African spirituality and beliefs because it comes from the community, it comes from the women in the community, it comes from the priests and the priest Um you know, it comes from grandma, you know, the ones who were not subject subjected to what they were subjected to over here, you know, a lot of conditioning. You see, we can't blame everything on the media. We can't blame everything on the TV and, and everything on the, you know, um, on food and whatever. A lot of it, and I say this all the time, a lot of it is handed down generation to generation. The women in the family, cycles, cycles. So you may come across the young lady that actually wants to change. You quite get, get it, but it's you know the programming and the brain is hard. You might want to, you know, but she just 
you know, she hasn't been programmed that way. And that's where, you know, then, then, then when a man comes in and goes in and he's like, yeah, me and man, I'm, I'm, I'm helping, you know, but and that, that's too much for her now. I mean, he's not saying I'm coming to beat you. I'm coming to, you know, beat it into you. He's saying, you know, like, this is a man. I'm a man. And I want to, I need to show you, you know, what it really takes to be with a man. The thing about it is that we've been conditioned to hear that voice or to take that approach and take it as something as controlling. When that's not always the case. You know, controlling is when the man is literally saying, do this, do that. You know what I'm saying? No, you can't go here. No, you can't do that. You know, we 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 need to be able to open our ears, open our heart, and connect. There is a blockage. There's a huge, there's a big, big blockage, a big disconnect. Big, big, big disconnect. You know, um, that's sad. But that, that disconnect is there. Let me uh, let me read this super chat real quick again. Thank you for the super chats. Let me scroll back up to it. Here we go. Uh, Ketty Charles says Ketley. Oh, shout out to Ketley, everybody. Our uh, our Haitian uh, sister. Shout out to Ketley. Uh, you need to create a greet a meet and greet for the single conscious people. We need to meet great productive people so that we can be on the same page, especially on trying to reconnect with the continent. Now, they're single black. I'm sorry, straightblacklove.com, you guys. Go to straightblacklove.com. In fact, I need to reach out to the sister and see if she wants to create uh, a meet and greet. I know she's in the uh, UK. So, uh, you know, I need to reach out to her and see if that's something she wants to, uh, isn't trying to do. But make sure you guys go to straightblacklove.com. All right, Fafa Bala, go ahead. Someone said women speak against polygamy, but how is every woman going to end up? What are your thoughts on polygamy? I'm for polygamy. Okay. Uh, no. men, it might not be for everyone because, you know, um, and let me just briefly touch on, you know, the spiritual system. There might be times when a woman will be told or a man maybe you feel, you know, he fosters, you can, you, you can only be in a, in a monogamous uh, relationship. And that might have something to do with something that in the future, some, something comes up, you don't know. When that time comes, you're definitely going to go, oh, oh, okay, I see. And sometimes that's just for the relationship that you're in because, you know, it just isn't built that way. But apart from that, um, there, the only con that I can find that in, in a polygamous relationship for the only two is if the man is not financially in the position to do that. Um, or the construct is where, you know, like if everybody's working together to build it up, you know, if you, it's a family business going on and you, okay. But you know, the man should be financially able to do it before. If not, you know, there are ways, but that is the preference. But the only reason, the only major con is jealous women. That's it. Um, we could talk about all the uh, the pros and everything, but jealous women. Um, I feel like, and on that, and we can, I don't know, we can ask me questions about, you know, the pros. Um, I feel like if a man has a wife already, that first wife should definitely have a say in any other wife that he chooses to take. He should just go out and pick a woman. And I do feel like they should at least get to know each other um, even more, even better if the wife, like the first wife, you know, finds the other wife or the second wife or the third wife or whatever like you know not that she's out there searching for it i feel like these things should also happen very naturally it shouldn't be a white hunt um on, on behalf of the woman um because you know you can get too emotional but if it happens naturally that's even better that you know you know what 
you, you know, that that's what it pays to know your man and have his best interest at heart. You know. Um All right, um, go ahead, go ahead. Okay, I was saying bonding and building amongst um, amongst women is is ideal too, but not necessarily so because even like back, I know back, you know, back home on the continent, sometimes that's not even an option. You know what I mean? Um, but I I feel like there are many many benefits to polygamy. So, and um, I'm a firm believer in it. Uh, Tori Indigo, we need to see your face. You can't hide. No. Oh, your camera's broken. Okay, all right. So we'll give you a pass then, if your camera's broken. I know your phone works though. I know your phone works though. But uh, Tori, uh, send me an email, Tori. I'm gonna, I'm gonna send the link. Everyone, again, once again, thank you for uh, for joining. Make sure you hit that like button. Uh, Someone in the chat room says, "Let me read this comment." You want five wives, but you can't afford, but you can't super chat or pay car note. Exactly. So everyone on here that supports polygamy, but has not sent one, uh, has not sent one super chat. Damn you. How, how, how are you going to afford polygamy, but you can't send a super chat? Th thank you. Thank you for making that comment. Thank you so much. Thank you for making that comment. All right, Tori, I'm about to see you the link. Um, you talked about security, sex. What what what, what else is there? Says she's lying. I think so. I don't know if they're talking about me, but I'm open for questions as as far as personally. I can't ever speak on behalf of the whole, you know, woman each female species. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um. I've been in a polygamous relationship or polygyny, so to speak. Really? Yeah. How was that? Like, like how, how was it? Like, as far as, like, responsibilities, like, who has to cook and bills and... Okay, let me ask you. Are you, from, are you familiar with... Uh, what's this guy's name? Uh, man, what's his name? Yeah. Um, yeah. No, who am I talking about? Brother Polite. <laughs> no, not Brother Polite. Uh, the other dude that's in Central America that just got arrested. Uh, what's his name? Indigo. The Indigo crew. What's his, uh, come on, somebody help me out. Nature Boy. Nature Boy. Nature Boy. Oh, Nature Boy. I'm familiar with him. I don't follow him anymore. I started when he first started out. I was like, okay, he's going to move in Costa Rica. And then got yeah. him. <laughs> Shout out to College Genesis for uh, donating to the uh, church fund. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, College Genesis says the sister guest is beautiful. Thank you, Carla. Yeah, Carpe Nature, Nature Boy. Yeah. So Nature Boy, uh, Nature, Nutty Nature, Scary Boy. Ugh. <laughs> um, yeah, my sentiment. I don't, I don't, I don't understand where he's going at all. Um, I'm not in agreement with with most of what's going on there. I don't follow. I, I actually haven't watched um, TV in a very long, long time, thankfully. Um, so that's I mean, what is he? He's on YouTube, right? He yeah, does he's on, yeah, he's on, on YouTube. He's on YouTube. I, there are probably three YouTube channels that I follow. You know. Regularly, this is one. You know, if you ain't, now, I, I, now, I don't even know what he's doing now. It got kind of crazy a long time ago, and I, I uh, just tuned off of that. So, you guys would have to fill me in. I, I don't know what he's doing either, but I mean, I think he has several wives, several kids. You know, he has uh, like a cult. Like a cult, you know. Yeah. It's been very, very cool. Um, but now, uh, polygamy, I think, is a beautiful thing um, because I do believe that, you know. T. Kelly, yeah, says, uh, T. Kelly says he went to um, uh, Chris Brown's university. 
Is he beating on women? Is he beating on women now? Is he beating on women? <laughs> no, not at all. No, he's not. Okay. Let's, can we get away from him now? Because I, I don't agree with anything that he has going on over there. And I don't really want to talk too negatively about any one particular person. But no, I'm, I, 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 mm -hmm. anyway, so why do we have marriages? And so, you know, that's one thing. Why do you have a marriage? You know, and then are you, where'd you go? Where'd Diana go? I think we lost our host for a second. Anybody want to ask me questions why, why we're waiting for him to come back? King Abyssinia, can you can you guys hear me? Because um, Adewale Dynast is he lost his connection. Can you let me let me do what he does? Is can I can somebody press one if you can hear me? One, okay, great. So King Abyssinia, where are you at? Too many men without wives leads to unstable society. Yes. And I know in Nigeria and other West African places, some, <clears throat> this is just what I've been told. You can't even. Like you can't be an Oba, you can't be a king unless you have, um, hold on one second, you guys. Hold on one second. Okay, I'm back. Can you guys see me? <laughs> if I can, you said Nature Boy lost, uh, broke the chat. Um, let me get a one again if you guys can see me and hear me. He called, he said that he lost the internet connection. He'll be back on. So he'll be right back. We can continue. Okay. So, um, I wear glasses, you guys, but they're broken, so I can't even see. I'm looking at the chat over there. All right, great. So yeah, like some some in some countries they can't even ascend the throne, you know, without a wife. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I think polygamy is good for the economy and building business, you know, and uh, you know your your family legacy, your bloodline. You know, carrying that last name, um, it takes a lot of stress off of, for women in particular, it takes a lot of the stress load off of, of women. Excuse me, if you are, assume, if you're a wife and you're by yourself as, as a wife, um, no, Dinus will be back. He'll be back. But he's, yeah, he's, he's back now. Okay, okay, I'm, okay, I'm back, y'all. I'm back. I'm back. They're, they're, they're holding my internet back. They hold. They were holding my internet back. All right, go ahead. Yeah. So, um, I feel like you know, if you're a, a woman in a marriage, your responsibility 
as, as that single individual is far greater and could be more strenuous than if you were one out of two or three or four or five. Personally, I don't think I want to be in a marriage where there's three or four or five. You know, three maybe, but, uh, you know, and then <laughs> it takes a lot of stress off. It does because the responsibility can be split or um, you just have more coming into the family. Um, I know there there are some men out there that have multiple wives and none of them work. They just they just tend to the home, tend to the children, tend to the man. Um, and that man, in turn, tends to them like royalty. So, like, you know, you, you wonder how. Because he has a lot less stress. A lot more is being done to help him, you know. Um, he can get a lot more done. He can play his role more. So, stress, you know, they say money problems are the biggest, you know, is, is the biggest cause for failed relationships or marriage. But it, it, to me, it's not just money. It's the lack of money leads to stress. It, it's stress, you know. Um, I don't know if anybody agrees or disagrees. I think the uh, brother Adewale is about to, uh, Adewale is about to uh, call in. Yeah. Adewale, email me and I'll send you the link. Now he said his parents were in a uh, polygamous relationship, but it didn't end. It, it didn't end well at all. So, you know, we'll get his uh, take on it. But everyone, sorry about the technical difficulties. I don't know what happened. My internet just shut down. And also, please hit that like button as well. Please hit that like button. So, so what? What did I miss? With my uh, with my, uh, my AOL internet dial up went out. Um, not much. I was basically saying that, um, you know, for as for is, is it King Abyssinia or some Abyssinia? He said that, you know, yeah. men that are not married, you know, um, what did you say? You know, basically, it's not good for the economy or something to that nature. It, it, it leads to a failed, you know, economy and I, I I agree with him I agree with him and then I was saying that you know there's some countries in Africa where you cannot even ascend the throne as a king unless you're married you know that's just essentially mm -hmm. married so you know again it, you know you can't just box everybody up into one little thing you, you, you have to each Household, each couple varies based on what they're already bringing to the table, what they're capable of. You know, because you might not be bringing a lot, but if you have that capability, and it's it, you know, it's it's obvious. It's up to each person in that relationship to push the other person towards that, to groom them or to encourage them to to you know to um, enhance that and grow it. You know. So. Hold on one second. Out uh, of Wale, I'm about to send you the link right now. Yes, it is. Kurt Smith. So like I, yeah. Um, All right, Wale. Ade Wale, I just sent the link. You got the link, Ade Wale. The reason why I do think that polygamy has become Taboo, you know, we take it back to when they first hauled us over here. It's empowering. There's strength in numbers. You know, um, it boosts the man to, I mean, if you want to take it to all levels, it boosts his self esteem, it boosts his sense of manhood. Um, you know, he has a, he has, he has a, he has a, 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 a front, you know, with him. He has, he has backup. His women, you know, what we warriors do, you know, um, and as a, as a family unit, once you start having children and grow, we're, we're just stronger for it. Um, you know, I'm willing to bet. Maybe there's a book that I haven't read, you know, that that actually says this, but I'm willing to bet that even back in slavery, there were still men, you know, 
having multiple, you know, wives. Maybe it wasn't official. Maybe it wasn't on paper, but they were still, you know. <laughs> um, okay, so let me ask you, will you be okay with your husband having a side piece or will it have to be like an official wife? Um, no side piece because she can't take from the table, from the plate. She got to be bringing to it. You know, okay. so say you're taking him, you're taking him away from his family. You're taking him. Well, what are you contributing? If I'm going to, to to share my husband, you know, you better be worth it. You know, what is your contribution to me? And I don't know. You, you know, you, you, I don't know. He, he better know what he's doing too. Like who, if she's your side piece, how do you know she's not two other men's side piece? What are you bringing home? You bring home funky energy. You bring home STDs. You bring home drama. You bring home a bullet from her husband or from the guy who wanted her side pieces or what? Like what? So no, I would much rather um, him be married or committed than to have a side. Piece. No jealousy, you know, because from from my experience too, you know, if you're gonna be a man and he's, you know. Um, Consider, you know, he, he's he's looking for another wife or someone to, you know, commit to. There's a dating phase, so you get to see a lot of this. Too. You get there's a dating phase. You know, he's not gonna go up and say, "I found somebody, I like her, and I'm gonna, you know, be with her." So you, the, you know, leave the women You're going. Hey, Adewale, you might need to uh, mute your phone. It's just the uh, transmission is there's like an echo and. All kinds okay. of stuff going on. Okay. All right, go ahead, Papa Ma. Able to see the character of this woman before the man does. That's just what we do. We're good at. If you're in tune, if you're focused, we can tell you almost everything about that woman based on the behavior of the man and the patterns that he's developing since dating this new woman. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, if if she claims to be okay with a polygynous relationship or a polygynous relationship, yet every time you kind of like, you know, he's only home two days out of the week now, you know, and you have a newborn baby, or you know what I'm saying? He's like, hold hey, up, out of wallet, you're, uh, you're echoing, brother. Oh, really? Yeah. All right. Uh, go ahead. Uh, off right. Off. You know, if if you have, you know, two children at home and, you know, you have a routine every weekend, you go to the park and you play ball with your boys, right? Now, all of a sudden, you know, a whole month has gone by and you've only gone to the park once to play ball with your boys. So you got to question her character now. Like, is she trying to break your family or is she really trying to be a part of this now? Because if she had this man's best interest at heart, and if she was really about polygamy, she would be also trying to see how she can help strengthen him, where she can fit in, not see what she can, you know, see as much as she can get to take away. You know what I'm saying? So if you, you, you care about this man, you care about everything that he already came with before you met him. You know what I'm saying? So, and that's just one example. Um, so again, dating is, is imperative. Getting to know people you know all around okay all right well, you want to you want to add to that um uh, if you're uh hopefully your, your phone is echoing but go ahead all right well, eh? i agree with you black sunrise renetta i believe I, 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 how, how, how is the sound uh, it's a little bit better. I'll go, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. First of all, thank you for having me. And hi to the sister. Wow, we say, we say, we say, Bowen. Yeah. Peace and blessings hey, to you. Hey, yeah. Bowen. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> yes. Salute. I respect you. Thank you for your insights. I appreciate the fact that you're able to talk about this particular topic. Because, I mean, um, it's a huge thing that at the end of the day, before religion, Western religion and Eastern religion came to us, we had always practiced polygamy. So I'm from a family of um, my 
my two parents, my paternal grandpa and maternal grandpa, they both had four wives each, right? So I have a bunch of cousins from everywhere. To be honest, I really hope my cousins are not watching this video right now because I have a bunch of cousins everywhere. Um, <laughs> what I'm about to say is real, is real life. So the thing is, um, um, I'm going to talk about my paternal grandpa right now. While he was alive, um, he lost his second wife, right? So um, he had three wives before he passed away, three surviving wives. One passed away early. And then um, while he was alive, it was all nice. It was all, you know, beautiful. Whenever we had the yearly meetings and vacations back in the hometown in Ogun State, everybody was nice to everybody. It was all, you know, it was just a beautiful thing for everybody to be in the same building. I'm talking about children, grandchildren from four different wives, right? Mm -hmm. The moment my grandpa died, paternal grandpa, he was a multimillionaire, right? It was a very uh -oh, rich man. Uh oh, they started fighting over the money. Yes. <laughs> I'm telling you, you know, you know, <laughs> the biggest disappointment that I witnessed was that my dad and his stepbrother, they're about the same age. So those guys were like really cool friends. They were stepbrothers, but at the same time, they were good friends growing up. I, I never witnessed any beef between them, between their siblings of different moms. But then the moment my grandpa died, everything changed. Everything took a 180 degree turn to the extent that right now, the brothers, the step brothers that were friends really close back in the days, along with their kids that were also close. So cousins, nobody, nobody talks anymore because there's been so much animosity and there's, there was so much fakeness in the happiness that was going on while my grandpa was alive that the moment he passed away, people just had to come out and showcase their true colors. And there was so much beef, so much hatred. Became, it became a dangerous situation. So much but, so. I don't know about it real quick. Did your, uh, did your grandfather have a will at all or any type of a legacy planning? Yes. Yes, my grandfather had a will. He passed away when he was 90. Mm -hmm. So the will that he dropped off, I'll, I'll just give you a little bit of a detail in the will. So one part of the will entailed him, um, required the lawyer to give out part of his real estate to a particular child. Mm. And now this is where the beef was. That child that was willed all that property, she was like the child of the second wife. So, you know, there is a hierarchy system when it comes to polygamy. The first wife is kind of the, the matriarch, like the dawn. Mm -hmm. Then the second wife um, pays respect to the first wife. And so it goes until the last wife, right? right. But um, because my grandpa willed out so much, of his properties to the daughter of one of the, of the second wife. It was a big problem. And understandably, um, now I'm not trying to sound misogynistic. How do you pronounce that word? Like, yeah, I can't I, pronounce it either. And, and I guarantee you a uh, feminist is going to be in the, uh, uh, in the comment section after this and be like, Dinah, you mispronounce the word. It always happens. I can't. Yeah. Go I, I don't care about the word, man. I know how to speak Yoruba. Yoruba is better than English. It's misogynistic. Misogynistic. Misogyny. Misogynistic. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so, um, you know, the, the, the problem with polygamy that I experienced in my own family line was that there is so much fakeness in the happiness, in the smile that people exchange while the patriarch is still alive. The moment the patriarch passes away, people's true colors come out. And it's just almost impossible for there to be equal love amongst siblings. You're going to have a stronger affiliation towards your immediate siblings 
as opposed to your step siblings, if you know what I mean. So those differences are definitely there to create um what's it called? Um beef and strife in the future. You know, I was I was having a conversation with a friend of mine about two days ago. And he's from Ikiti. Ikiti is like north of Oshun. Mm -hmm. Me, I'm from Ogun. Ogun is like the south. It's closer to Lagos. So I was asking him, how come you have a different dialect from mine? Because we we both are Yoruba. For example, Dinas, your Yoruba in Oshun State mm -hmm. is slightly different from my Yoruba in Ogun State, right? Yeah, it's kind of like in, in America, my English in California would be different from the English in Texas. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, um, you know, in, in that case, in the, in when re referring to English, it's more about the accent. But when it comes to traditional languages like Yoruba, it's like a dialect. It's deeper than the accent, right? So basically, where this whole thing started off from, the Yoruba people, they started off from Oshun State in Ife. Mm -hmm. The man had multiple wives. They had multiple kids. The kids had to keep on migrating far away because they needed independence and they needed their privacy or whatever. So the languages changed as time went on because um, after so many years, the same things that were pronounced, um, things became pronounced differently after so many years, after people migrated far away. And that's how there are so many dialects of Yoruba, for example, for, for an example, right? And um, if you think about it, it leads to conflict because at the end of the day, you when you read through the Yoruba history, you find out that the Ifes have had wars with the Modakekes, the Ijebus have had wars with the Egbas, and you know different parts of different areas in the Yoruba kingdom have had wars in the past. And those wars, um, when they happen, the people totally forget about the fact that these people originated from the same family tree, right? Yeah, right. So mm -hmm. it's the same thing. You can um, relate that with polygamy. At the end of the day, even though people come out from the same parents, the kids are not going to be friends. It's like... Most of the time, I'm pretty sure there are um, other cases where products of polygamy, they remain friends and they remain having good relationships. But for the most part, whenever there is a polygamist relationship, the kids end up not being friends because their mothers, if it's a man that has multiple yeah, No, I, I, I disagree because my buddy, my close friend in Senegal, his father has four wives and they all live together. Well, hold on. Three. three. Either three or four wives. I think three. They all live together and everybody gets along. It's one big happy family. I mean, at the end of the day, there will be exceptions, right? But from my own paternal side and maternal side, it wasn't really good, to be honest. My paternal side, it was even worse because the man was wealthy. My maternal side, he wasn't that wealthy, but at the end of the day, I don't even know my cousins from the other side, if you know what I mean, right? I only know my immediate cousins. The ones that are like my step cousins, I have zero relationship with them. So at the end of the day, it's a 50-50. It can be a good thing, that's polygamy. And at the same time, it can be to the demise of relationships. So yeah, I just wanted to share my family story and let people know the, the disadvantages because me for sure I witnessed that growing up in my life like I had some cousins that while we're growing up we we're super close and then weird things started happening someone passed away people are accusing um, the parents of someone else of killing that ca that child that passed away you know so so much craziness can happen from polygamy so I feel like it's it's too much of a headache me personally I I can't get into polygamy I'm already married. I have a wife, mm -hmm. but um, to be honest, I'm just going to have to whisper. It's tempting sometimes, but, <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I wouldn't try it because it's too much of a headache for me, especially right now that I've been in the Western world for a while mm -hmm. and it's just too expensive. You can't do it here. If you want to do polygamy, 
yeah, you can do it back home. Yeah, it's better, you know, but it comes with its disadvantages as well. So it's better you have those knowledge and apply it to yourself if you want to get into it. Well, brother Adewale, we we appreciate it. Yeah, thank you, my brother. Ah, uh, no problem. Uh, Tori, I just sent you the link. Uh, Tori Indigo, I uh, check your inbox. I sent the link. Adewale, you can, you can stay on if you want to. So, you know. Yeah, I'm I'm okay. gonna leave now, bro. I'll, I'll okay. be in the chat section. But okay, thank you for having me. Thank right, you, brother. No problem. No problem. No All problem. right, peace no to problem. you. Peace to your Thanks, sister. Brother. Yeah. So I just wanted to um. Hold on. Will we lose you too, Adiwani? Uh, I'd be fair, Adiwani. Yes, huh? Okay, you do. So, what he's saying, it goes right back to what I was saying is, you know, for one, oh, before I forget that point, the, I don't, I don't know how, how much Western influence was on that, you know, on, on them at the time. So, that may or may not have been effective, but this is what I was saying that I think is very important for the wives to bond, to know each other, you know, and for the first wife to have a stay, you know, if she, you know what I'm saying? Because it creates a sisterhood. It's supposed to be not first, second, third, but sister, right? And I'm not opposed to um, the wives living under the same roof. You know, you have a place big enough you know, where everybody has their personal space and, you know, women get emotional, that time of the month comes or whatever the case may be. And then children come into play and all of that. And this is why I'm saying I think it's important for there to be a, a, a bond because then, you know, you're not looking so much as just the stepmother factor, stepchild factor. You know, it really becomes that these children are really brothers and sisters, not, you know, step, you know, you, you have the same father. They are brothers and sisters. That's right. one the wives are more like aunties and not stepmothers, you know? So there's that, that bond. And another reason why I said that I don't think it's a good idea to have more than two or three wives because it does get a little bit hard. You know, people do change. People do play, you know, put on a good front when you're getting to know them and things like that. So um, it can cause a problem, but it's my father, my father has, a few different um, mothers for his children, you know, mm -hmm. one out of several, several siblings. And every one of the mothers communicate, whether they like each other or not, I don't know, you know, but I remember growing up and, you know, my mom, you know, had a pretty good relationship with you know, my, my brother and sister's mom. And then, you know, there was another mom and, you know, that, and there's no rivalry amongst myself or any of my siblings. Um, we might be a lot more distant now because we're leading different types of lives and we're living in different places and the age gap. Um, but my father always had us around each other. We all used to go and spend weekends or spend time with my father. Um, he, you know, if he could be there at his place and, and one of the mothers, you know, there was no legal marriage amongst all of the mothers, only, only one. But he could be there with, I'm just going to use stepmother for lack of, of better words right now. He could be there with one of my stepmothers and my mother or another mother would come Oh, hey, what's up? You here today? And everybody's sitting down there, you know, vibing, um, conversation, children running around. And when that's done, gone, you know. Um, so that has a lot to do with my perception because I saw how healthy it was for us. So it, it really all depends on the individuals. And, and again, you know, he mentioned the facade of happiness you like people pretending to be okay and happy and stuff like that um at the the root of any relationship no matter the type you know monogamous polygamous polygamous communication is key you got to be able to and this is where you know the submission you know either is or isn't based on 
respect and trust and you in any type of relationship or situation and you can't get your needs, not necessarily you want, you know, because we can't have everything we want all the time. And if our needs are not being intended to, we're supposed to be able to talk about it. And that man is supposed to be able to do whatever is necessary to try to help those needs get met. You know, and it could be a joint effort. But um, it really, really, really just depends. Like you said, it's a 50-50. I feel like, you know, when there's like uh, too much of a patriarchy thing going on with the, you know, it's it, the man is like me, me, I make the decisions. I say this, I go, I found a new wife, I'm getting married. And you force the other women or the other women in the picture to just have to accept it, you know. Then remember, she's human. She wasn't prepared for this or she doesn't know her. Or the other wife can come in and, you know, behind your back, giving her the side eye 24-7, you know, over there working juju on her or something, doing whatever, you know, like, you 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 never know. I don't know. I can't see you. I don't know if it's just my phone. I'm right here. I'm right here. You can't see me? I can see like a quarter of you. But yeah. A quarter of me. Yeah, like your face in the frame. I'm not seeing you. You can't, you can't see me? I'm right here. Not on my, I think it's my phone. It's just my okay. phone. You do you have Monday's phone? Huh? Monday. Did, did you give your phone to Fafu Malau? I can see you. I just can't see you last time. I can see you on the other screen here. Okay, okay, okay. So um but yeah. Here we go with patriarchy. Let me tell you something. It's real. It doesn't mean that every man is. I'm not a feminist, and I love men, and I am anti-feminist. Um, so if I say patriarchy, that's exactly what I mean. It does exist. I didn't say that all men are like that. Um, I know that this country has bred our men, not all of them, you know, have fallen under the spell to be like that. Um, and, you know, because that's the type of governance that we're under, you know, any, 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 any bread that you, you live and it's governed by, you know, um, you know, predominantly men, then you're more likely to have more of that, more of it, not fully, you know, um, and it just depends on societal rules and standards. It must have been conditioned into the minds of all men. So patriarchy is real. I did not call anybody a you know, I didn't say anybody was um, that way or whatever, but um, again, it goes back to connotations associated with work. I like to say, you know, in a positive sense, masculinity, you know, I like to say healthy masculinity, um, you know, a man, you know, should take the lead. Even he should be in a position, you know, to do it. And the woman should trust him and he should be able to, you know, trust this. It takes time. You don't just jump into relationships and give your trust. He, you know, he shouldn't do it to a woman. No man should jump into a relationship because he's all in love with her. You know, her goodies were, were too good to, to give up their floor. That happens a lot. A man has sex with a woman and he's like, oh, that was so good. That's ooh, I can't let that go. I got to have that. And next thing you know. You know, he's saying all kinds, of, you know, it, it, people act like women are the only one to get attached after having sex. Not all women do, but the majority of women, you know, after having one good session or, you know, they, they attach, they think they got this other man or they want the man, even though the man might have already told them, look, I'm unavailable. Mm -hmm. Men have a tendency to get hooked on, 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 the, on the, I'm trying to be ladylike here, you know, get hooked on what's between the legs too. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They fall all the way in. And the next thing you know, you got two little dum dums trying to have a relationship. And, you know, okay, also because, you know, they don't know what they got themselves into. The man wants to take the lead, the, the lead and she's like, I don't know you like that. I don't trust you. This and the other. What are you guys doing together? It, this is why I didn't want to mention sex earlier because sex is often just as much, you know, a downfall, the, you know, the cause of the downfall as it is a builder, you know. Um, you know, so. Yeah, so what we'll do, we'll go ahead and uh, close out. Uh, anything else you'd like to share in closing, uh, Miss Fafu Malau? 
No, if anybody has any questions they want to ask me directly, they can. I mean, um, but I think that submission is key. You, you look at marriages that have lasted. Some of them would tell you know they just did it because they didn't want to break up this against their religion. This and above. I mean, a good forty-five percent of marriages that have lasted, you know. The woman will tell you, you know, I just, love him, I, you know, but it's, she's not giving over right. There's conversation. It's not like she's just being blindly led. That's a misconception with submission that you're just letting the man make all the decisions for you without, you know, taking you into consideration. That is where submission submission becomes successful because he's already, he already he knows your heart. He knows your point of views. He knows your preferences. Um, you know, that's why we have a right mind and a left mind. The man is left brain, or, you know, left minded, and the woman is right brain or right mind. We have intuition, and you know, and the man has logic. You can't just do one. You know, you gotta have both. Logic is necessary. You know, you gotta find a way to put them together. Your intuition connects to him and he puts the logic with it, you know? Okay, this is how you feel. Now, how do we put this out in a logical way? How do we execute this with logic now? You know, we need men for that. Not to say that men, women don't have it. We do, you know? But, you know, th that's a man's strong point. Logic. So, our, you know, we, we have all of these ideas of we feel this way, but we don't necessarily know how to execute. Let the man execute, you know. And I think that we'll be, you know, much better off for it. Well, sister, we appreciate you coming on. How can people reach you if they want to continue the conversation offline? If you want to, <laughs> um, you can reach me on my Instagram or my, let me give you my email first. So water of life. So, you know, just like how it sounds, water of life, five, five at gmail.com or, um, Ogin Ocean, Oceanola. Um, if I can, are you there? Can you, can you type it for me, please? Um, Paku Milayo on Instagram or Ocean. Oye no shun, Oshinola. Let me let me see if I can type this in for you guys. It's gonna come in under my son's thing, but And guys, everyone, thank you so much for joining as well. Make sure you subscribe, hit that like button on the way out. You got it, Fafu Malau? Yeah. Um, I put that in there. Water of life. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So you okay, you're on your other. Got it. That's to my son's account, but I just Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Women are left and men are right brain. No. Okay. But everyone, thank you so much for joining us. Make sure you go to search for Uhuru on Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, and Facebook. Like, share, and subscribe. Until next time, family, Dina Samir, search for Uhuru. Peace. Thank you. Uh, Odaro. Odaro.